Hi and welcome to another Mixed Media Tuesday and today I'm playing on one of my new art journals and this is the stone paper one so it includes only stone paper inside which is really durable and I will share lots of projects in this journal so you will see how it reacts with different mediums. On this journal you can do double spreads or work on one page which is what I'm going to do today since it is the first page of my journal and uh, I'm using some masking tape just to protect the cover since I want to end up nice and clean. I'm going to work with acrylic paints and these are from the Allegro collection by Stamperia. The exact colors that I'm using are blue aviation and milk white. I am applying the acrylics with a brush directly on top of the stone paper. I didn't prep it with anything, I didn't apply gesso or any other primer. If you want to help the paint spread easier, you can definitely go ahead and dip your brush into water so that you have a better coverage. I'm not being neat here, this is just the first layer, however I want to pretty much cover up the blank page. Now I'm not even waiting for the blue paint to dry and then I will go on top and blend in a little bit of that white. This is milk white. I'm brushing it in, blending the colors together directly on the page and the idea here is not to end up with a completely flat blue color. If you want to make it more interesting you can even add those colors with a spatula just for a different effect and the page does take a lot of uh, acrylic paint. Don't worry at all about it since you are working on a stone paper. No matter how much water or how much paint you want to this page, it is not a problem. It's going to stay nice and flat. And I'm going to show you the back. It reacts beautifully with acrylic paint and it doesn't bleed at the back. Now I'm using my heat gun to make sure that everything is completely dry and don't worry about the heat on top of stone paper, again it stays nice and flat. And I'm going to show you here how it looks at the back, it didn't bleed and uh, look at the page, it's completely flat. And working with acrylics is just one of the mediums that you can work with on top of stone paper. Here I'm working with my dye ink pad. Now this is the coffee color and I'm just applying it with a blending tool only on the edges. Look how ugly it is, but I'm going to show you an amazing technique. I'm going to add lots of water. I don't mind at all if the paper is going to work. Remember this is stone paper and uh, the water doesn't affect it. Now, with a clean paper towel, I'm going to blot the excess water and look at the amazing bottle that I just got. This is a great technique that you can do on lost on paper. It is the property of it. It has kind of a coat on top that allows for this technique to work beautifully. And of course, I'm repeating the same technique all around the border. And again for today, for my project, I'm using products from my latest collection with Stamperia and I know it is a little bit frustrating since you cannot find them on shops yet, but uh, hang in there, they will be in about a week or two depending on where you live. And I hope that uh, once you, you will be able to grab those supplies, you will have lots of ideas from my channel on what you can do with the products. So here I'm just showing you that you can work with the dye ink to add some splatters if you swipe the ink on your mat and then apply some water. And since I can go on and on with the background, let's make it more interesting. Here I'm using my shadow black ink. This is the basic uh, really deep black dye ink and I'm going all around the edges. Only at the very edge, I'm not covering up that lovely brown border that I got. And keep in mind that these dye inks are water reactive, which means that whenever you apply splatters on top of them, they are going to react. And they are going to react with my embossing paste as well. This is actually the volume paste by Stamperia. It is nice and thick, dries really quickly, it doesn't smell and it keeps its shape. So I'm going to use one of my stencils and this is the one with the compasses. I'm adding the detail in a few areas. Never use the whole stencil as it is, just use areas. It makes it look more organic and random. And I have zoomed in for you so you can see how the ink reacts with the volume paste. Wherever the brown ink is, just because it's not permanent, it gives a little tint 
on the volume paste, while wherever you can see the acrylic, which is permanent, the volume paste stays completely white. It is a great look for an art journal when nothing is completely perfect or completely bright, so I absolutely love this effect. So here I'm using the type text from my background stamp set and I'm doing some stamping with black ink. And of course, if you want to use the same techniques for a double spread, just go ahead and do that on the other page as well. You will end up with a lovely background and I will show you what you can do on top of it with focal points. This is a great background and would, with blues and browns that would work both for steampunk, it would work for vintage. I'm going to use it with my line and I'm going to bring in the hot air balloon. This is from my ephemera pack and uh, you can see this is a sticker. You can peel it off and stick it down if you like. So for now I'm going to ink up the edges with the same brown that I used for the background. All the designs in the ephemera pack are kind of bright but they could work for pretty much any style. I like to ink up the edges with the same color of ink that I used for the border, the coffee brown uh, dye ink. So this uh, kind of brings everything together for a more coherent look. Now, instead of peeling off the sticker, I'm going to use glue only at the center of the hotter balloon, leaving the edges without glue. It's just a little thing that I like to do so that it allows me to tuck things underneath if I choose to do so. And now I'm going to browse through my ephemera and try to audition some of the flowers to decide how I want to embellish my hotter balloon. Here I decided to go with a bigger flower just for a bigger impact. And since I'm working with a big flower, I'm going to pick up bigger leaves. So after I audition all the images and I decide how I want them to look, I'm going to commit and stick them down. In this stage, you can definitely go with your glue or just peel them off. Remember, these are stickers. And again, for these die cuts, I do ink up the edges to give the same look and feel as the rest of the page. Now, if you notice, all those cutouts don't have a white border all around. And that was really important for me in this collection. And also, you will find that they are quite thick. They are not super thin like cardstock. This is 300 GSM, so it is a heavy cardstock. And now let's play with the rabbons. Rabbons are super fun, they are lovely finishing touches and all you need to do is to just pick up what you want to use and embellish your project. You can go with the black borders to go all around, you can use the borders as stems or other details, I'm going to show you many projects on how you can use those black borders. You can use the flowers and the leaves like I'm doing here for example. And notice here, I'm trying to show you that you can layer them. I just added the leaves on top of uh, another branch with flowers. So there is no issue at all, just layer one on top of the other. Their designs are opaque, so they are going to stand nicely on top of other elements. And what I love about them is that they are not shiny at all. If you tilt the page on light, you won't be able to tell if you just drew that or if it is a sticker. They don't look like a sticker, not even a satin finish. And also you can use the white ribbons. These are absolutely amazing. I have to say they are my favorite from all three of them in my collection. Just because you are able to add this white text that is not going to blend in with whatever is underneath. And it's super quick and simple without having to do white embossing or any other technique. When you use the rabbons, always cut out the part that you want to use. This page is full of text in different fonts. You will find typed ones, you will find scripted text, even signatures. And uh, I don't like to use it as a whole, as it is. I like to use it randomly in different areas. That's what I did previously on top of the balloon as well as on the leaves and flowers. And that's what I'm going to continue doing this time on the background. You can wrap the rubbles with whatever you have. It can be the back of your brush, it can be one of your bone folders or even with your spatula, like I'm doing here. It works just fine. I'm not going to use it all, but I always keep the backing so that I can stick it back in and keep it for the next time. So the page is almost complete. I just need to do a few finishing touches. Of course, I have to grab my white gel pen and add some highlights on the die cuts. 
Really sketchy lines, nothing has to be perfect, I'm not even paying attention on where the light might be. These are not highlights, this is just doodling with a white gel pen and having fun. I always like to add a motivational quote on my art journal pages, so I went with let's fly for this page. I like to emphasize one of the words from my quote with a bigger font, that's why I'm using my alphabet stamp set and I'm spelling the word fly. I usually like to visualize where this word is going to end and that's why many times you may see me stamping the word backwards. And of course the easiest way to add a quote on an art journal page is to just print them out on your printer and cut them out. I find it really handy to use my label maker. If you do have one, then it is the perfect size. So I'm going to complete my quote by sticking this down and with a black marker I'm going to outline it. I also grabbed my white gel pen and added some highlights on the word fly. And as always, I'm going to finish it off by adding some white splashes, which of course are optional. It really depends on the look that you like. Now I'm going to show you another page that I did when the release was still a secret, when I was just playing with the product. And this was done on the scrapbook pages from the Ring Journal. I did share that on my previous video. Here the background is just inking with the dye inks. I did use the same stencil with volume paste, however. A little different composition of the flowers on top of the balloon. I used a border stencil to create a border around the page, a different sentiment, and here is how with the same idea you move from bright to vintage. So here are some close-up photos and uh, I want to answer a few questions that I get all the time about the products. They will be available in one or two weeks depending on where you live. If you go to Google and write Create Happiness Stamperia, you will end up with lots of online shops that do have the products already as a pre-order and you will find some links down below as well in the description. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired and I'll see you all next time.